Now that we've seen how to complete the square and how certain combinations of A, B, and C contribute to finding the vertex, um, we're going to look at quick ways of finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry if you're given a quadratic function in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. So just a quick recall, <clears throat> F of X, if we wrote that down, um, after completing the square, it was a times x plus b over 2a quantity squared plus c minus b squared over 4a. Now, the vertex is either going to be the lowest point or the highest point on your parabola, depending on if it's concave up or concave down. With that in mind, this term right here is going to contribute when x doesn't cancel out with the b over 2a. So if we want this to be, say, the lowest point for the vertex with a positive, we have to get rid of this x plus b over 2a quantity squared term. And that's going to happen when x is equal to negative b over 2a, because that will cancel that out and leave us with just this number, which will turn out to be the lowest possible number. So the vertex is always going to occur at negative b over 2a, comma. Then you can either write that as f of b, uh, f of negative b over 2a, or we know exactly what the y coordinate will be when this term knocks itself out. And so that's going to be c minus b squared over 4a. That is going to be our vertex for any quadratic function. For the axis of symmetry, remember that the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that passes through the vertex. Since it's a vertical line that passes through the, the point that has an x-coordinate of negative b over 2a, that line is going to be x equals negative b over 2a. And remember, a parabola is concave up if a is positive. And if a is positive, it looks like a smiley face. And so the vertex is the absolute min of the quadratic function. A parabola is concave down if A is negative, so it looks like a frowny face, which makes the vertex the absolute max. And some other things that we will need when we're graphing a quadratic function, we need to find the y-intercept, and that's as simple as just plugging in zero for x and just seeing what happens. So if you're given something in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, when you plug in zero for x, you just get c back. So that's gonna be zero comma c. To find the x-intercepts, if there are any, we need to calculate this b squared minus 4ac, which this is what pops up in the quadratic formula. And just to remind you, the quadratic formula says that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you think back to our discussion about domains, since we have a square root, we have to be careful about the sign of the thing inside the square root, which is where these three conditions come from which tells us exactly how many x-intercepts we have. So if b squared minus 4ac is positive, then what that tells us is that the graph of the quadratic has two distinct x-intercepts, which can be found by solving the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And you can do this either by factoring, if you can recognize the combination of numbers, or by using the quadratic formula, this thing right here. The reason why there's two is because when you take the square root of a positive number, 
you have this plus minus out front. So x is going to equal negative b plus whatever the square root is over there, all over 2a, and x is going to equal negative b minus the square root of this, all over 2a. So you get two numbers for x. If, on the other hand, b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, we can still take the square root of zero, but what ends up happening is you lose this plus minus, and so you only have one zero. X is only gonna equal one single number, which means that the parabola touches the X axis at its vertex, right? If B squared minus four AC was equal to zero, if you cover that up, you end up having X equals negative B over two A, which is exactly where the vertex lives, right here. And then lastly, if for some calculation you end up getting that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then you're looking to take the square root of a negative number, and we're not going to do that in this class. If you've seen complex numbers or imaginary numbers before, that introduces a whole new beautiful branch of mathematics, which is way beyond the scope of this class. So if at any point you get b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, there are no x-intercepts, which means that the graph of f is either completely above or below the x-axis. It does not touch the x-axis at all. We'll put this into practice. Let's say that you have a function 3x squared plus 12x minus 5. We want to first determine if the graph is concave up or down. That's a really easy check. In this case, a is equal to three, b is equal to 12, and c is equal to negative five. So over here, the first question, is it concave up or down? a is positive, which means concave up. This looks like a smiley face. Next, we want to find its vertex. Once we already know what A, B, and C are, we know that the vertex is going to happen at negative B over 2A, which substituting in A and B gives us negative 12 over 2 times 3. If we simplify it, we have negative 12 over 6, which gives us negative 2. That is the X coordinate for the vertex. And to find the y coordinate, we simply take negative two and plug it into our function. Running out of space. So negative two squared is four. I'm going to take this negative and bring it out front. So we have 12 times two minus five. So altogether we have 12 minus 24 minus 5, and if you calculate that, you end up getting negative 17. So our vertex is located at negative 2, negative 17, and not only do we know where the vertex is, we know that the absolute minimum is negative 17 at x equals negative 2 because it's concave up. We want to find the axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line that passes through the vertex. And so that's x equals negative two. Next, we want to find the y-intercept. Y-intercept is where x is equal to zero. And so we find f of zero which gives us three times zero plus 12 times zero minus five. That is our y-intercept. And then we need to find the x-intercepts. So first things first, we are going to use this b squared minus four ac to determine how many x-intercepts we have. So b was 12, a was three, and c was negative five. 
if we do a quick calculation, we get 144. Four times five gives us 20. 20 times three gives us 60. Double negative gives us plus 60. So because this is positive, we know we have two distinct zeros. Now, we can even get more information from this number 204. Since 204 is going to be going into the square root of the quadratic, let's look at the factor tree for 204. This is obviously an even number, so 2 divides it. 102 is also an even number, so 2 divides it again. But then we end up with 51. So 51 is a prime number, which means the only things that divide 51... Oh, it's not a prime number. Sorry about that. So 3 divides it. If we take 3 and divide it into 51, that goes in 17 times. I apologize about that. But regardless, 51 doesn't break into more perfect squares. So altogether, if we do the quadratic formula, we get negative b plus or minus, since we have the two twos, one copy comes out front, then the square root of whatever's left over, so 3 times 17, which is 51, that's going to be all over 2 times a. And since 12 and 2 are both divisible by 2, we can knock out the 2s that are left over, which leaves us with negative 6 plus or minus square root 51 all over 3. And this is an irrational number, which means we're not going to be able to use normal factoring to find the zeros. We need to use the quadratic formula to get our zeros. And just so we have a complete answer, our x-intercepts are going to be located at x equals negative 6 plus square root 51 over 3, and x equals negative 6 minus square root 51 over 3. And for this last question, we want to determine the quadratic function whose graph has a vertex at negative 2, 5, and passes through the point 0, 7. So because we're given the vertex, we can rewrite the function as a times x plus 2 squared plus 5. Right? The vertex is at negative 2. Negative 2 is what's going to cause this expression right here to go away. And that's how we translate from a negative 2 as an x-coordinate for the vertex to this form of the quadratic function. So once we have this, we are told that the point 0, 7 is on the graph of this quadratic function, which means that when you plug in 0, you end up getting 7 out. just coming from this point being on the graph. But since we know that our function looks exactly like this, we can also plug zero in over here. And that's what I'll write down here, which allows us now to solve for the unknown value of a. So we have seven equals a times two squared plus 5. So 7 is equal to 4a plus 5. Subtract the 5 over and divide both sides by 4. I'm going to skip one step and simplify and we end up getting that a is equal to 1 half. So altogether our function f of x is 1 half x plus 2 squared plus 5. Why don't we expand this so it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c? 
if we FOIL out x plus 2 times x plus 2, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 5. And then we distribute the negative, or sorry, the 1 half into it. So we get 1 half x squared plus 2x plus 2 plus 5. And so altogether, we get 1 half x squared plus 2x plus 7. And what we can do is double check that 0, 7 is actually on the graph of this parabola. If we were to take 0 and plug it in for x, we end up getting 1 half times 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 7, which gives us 7, which tells us that 0, 7 is on this graph. And I leave it up to you to check that the point negative 2, 5 is also on this graph. So I would like you to check what is f of negative 2.